welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. And the starting lineups have concluded. So just sit right back and relax. We'll be back in just a moment. We are live. It's a Thursday night presentation here on 2K Sports. Joined now by Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. With us tonight, one of the quickest players in league history, Kenny the Jet Smith. I almost feel like I should say your name fast because that's the way you played the game. Well, I just... Let's check out the Eastern Conference standings now that we're in the new year. We take a look at the 76ers. So far, they've got the fourth best record in the conference. And for Philadelphia, they've stayed right there, just in sniffing distance of the conference leaders. That's a solid accomplishment at this stage of the season. Well, it's possible we haven't seen them at their best yet. They've shown they can play with any team in the league. Now they need to do it every night, not just some nights. And with tip-off coming up, we've got just enough time to hear from our good friend David Aldridge on the sideline. D.A., take it away. Kevin, thanks. Donovan Mitchell grew up around pro athletes. His father worked in Major League Baseball, and Donovan said, I saw guys making millions, staying humble and grounded. I also saw the other side, so I try to treat people right. I grew up that way, and the NBA doesn't change it. Kevin, he's showing as much as he's talking about it. What a great guy. DA, thank you for that. Greg Popovich, the Spurs coach, Kenny, has talked about how the three-point shot is ruining the game. Mm. What do you say when you hear that? Uh, well, he's a participant of that. I was about to say, like, <laughs> he's the one that he's brought it to the forefront. He's a more participant than of it. Uh, but I think overall, yes, because people now take bad threes over good twos. So players don't have worse shot recognition. I, I think they took bad twos just as much as they take bad threes. I mean... I'd never forget my college coach said, we had, I had a teammate took a shot. It was a, a bad shot. And I got on him about it. And the and coach looked at me and he said, hey, hey, you know, don't, we don't yell at our shooting guard. He said, I never met a player that took a shot he wasn't trying to make. Mm. And that stood with me because you are like, you don't shoot it to miss, but that doesn't mean it's a, a good shot. Right. Now a look at Philadelphia's starting lineup. They've got Lowry, Robert Covington out there with Brandon Ingram. Then there's Bradley Beal, and it's Adams in at the five. And for Houston, they've got Anthony. Mitchell is out there with Lonzo Ball. And there's Porzingis, and it's Hardaway in at the three, the small forward. He's so strong from mid-range. The D needs to keep in mind what a feel Mitchell has for that shot. Beal, that's for two. It's rebounded by Houston. They come into this one following the loss to the Mavericks. Yeah, Kevin, a ton of tension in that one. The fans were kind of on the edge of their seat right up until the end. And I tell you what, those are the kinds of games you love to be a part of. But, man, do you hate to lose them. And with the game of basketball going global, guys, Kenny, we've seen it. It's no longer a cakewalk for a U.S. team to go in those international tournaments and just uh, check the box. They got to compete, and they're going to face some terrific players. Yeah, well, back in 92 when the Dream Team was formed, it, it woke the world up. It, it allowed them to see what basketball at its best looked like. And so now we can imitate that, or we can emulate it, or we can find out who got those guys that good. That I was the plan for yeah. the Dream Team. Basically, it was to go and elevate the game of basketball. And that's exactly what happened right now. We have all these great players coming in from all over the world. Oh, that's a nice closeout by Ingram. He took away all the daylight on that play. Beal, the pass to Ingram. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Yeah, very little resistance. I mean, you had to bring much faster help than that. For Philadelphia, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. Takes a shot at the elbow. That's good from Lowry on the assist from Covington. You look at when you guys played, uh, Kenny, you know, a ton of incredible guards, certainly during your time. Which players gave you the biggest fits when you tried to guard them? Who, who were the most difficult guys? Well, you know, I didn't have to guard Jordan, but I could. I know that a lot of people had Mike. Mid oh, what a 
beautiful play. What the intensity. Did you see that? Great. A dynamic leaper with an impressive wingspan. Mitchell usually has some flashy dunks up his sleeve. Here's Anthony. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. Perfect example of how to run the break the right way and get a great look. Porzingis with the rebound. And so it's Ball who brings the ball up for the Houston Rockets. And guys, this is the first they're seeing of Philadelphia this year. And really, this is a team that expects to beat everyone when they step on the floor. But they were only able to split the series last year. Well, there was a good back and forth between these teams last year, if you remember. You'd expect uh, it to be a mismatch on paper, but it turned out to be pretty even. Covington. And that one's drained from the low block. And it's clear Covington isn't bashful. He welcomes any opportunity he gets to score inside. Kenny, as a freshman, you joined one of the great lineups to ever play in college basketball with guys like Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins. I mean, it was a who's who of the game. Yeah, I know, Michael was so excited to play with me. What, was he? <laughs> he was just, he was, he was for you. Went on a Carolina. visit, just on a visit. On a visit, you. But had. he wasn't the best player really at the time. Mm. Sam Perkins, right, was the guy. He was a four-year All-American, first team. So Sam, it was Sam Perkins who everyone was in awe, and plus he was from New York. Catching up on the changes for Houston, Goga Bitadze is checked in for Pazingas. Kyle Kuzma comes in for Anthony. Hollis Jefferson's checked in for Tim Hardaway Jr. And Alonzo Trier's subbed in for Ball. Curry with the steal. Here's the three. A rebound by Bitadze. Houston in the lead. There's Hollis Jefferson. Kept alive. Here's Mitchell. Banked in off the glass. Mitchell's got ten. Just a grinder. Always doing the dirty work on the offensive glass. And that's one of the things he brings to the table. Passes it to Ingram. Lots of room. That's good on the jump shot. Ingram's got his second basket of the game. Kenny, you've been an NBA analyst for over two decades, which is hard for me to believe. You look so young, like you go out there and play right now, but I'm sure this job has changed for you in that time, right? I think the job has not changed, actually, because when I first got here, I used to watch film every day. And actually, When you first started as an analyst? Every day for one year. Did you? Every day. And then you found out that what? I found out, I sat with the executive producer and I figured out what I needed to say, doing why, when, and what. Then, I just use that now. I just go back to those meetings then. There's nothing changed for me from that first year, which I knew nothing, to now, after I knew something. Being the award-winning broadcaster uh, you are now. It's that first year. Yeah, I, I would concur with His Majesty. <laughs> Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. I've never been called the Majesty. <laughs> Out of bounds, Philadelphia takes possession. The Rockets making a switch here. Wade's checked in, and Philadelphia also making a switch. Ajan Rondo's checked in for Seth Curry. The 76ers trail by four. Here's Maxi. The shot's good. Really, really good at recognizing the gaps and getting the ball to the rim. For Houston, they've gotten eight of their 13 shots to find the bottom of the bucket. Here's Mitchell. Misses off the right iron. Oh, the setup's good. That's the shot they're looking for, but you can't get them all to go. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. And giving up some inches inside, but makes up for it with an aggressive style. Yeah, it's the attack mindset. I mean, that helped him prevail right there. Sometimes you just got to go with your gut. And that drops, so they now lead by one. Here's Mitchell. He's coming off an unbelievably high-scoring game. Seventeen seconds left to play in the first quarter. Here's Wade. Finds the open look, and it's on target. Just focusing on the task at hand, that's all you can do. Oh, you know what it is. One play at a time. That's got to be the mindset, especially in such a tight game. Here's Ingram. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And that concludes a back-and-forth high-scoring first quarter of play. The Rockets on top, up by one.
We'll be back shortly live from Houston, Texas. Well, Greg, we know he's already a solid score, but Kyle Kuzma spoke to us before the game about evolving. The biggest area of growth would definitely be on the defensive end. Now having played with superstars, Kuzma is learning what it takes to win. He's getting only so many shots per game, so I, I applaud him for finding other ways to contribute to his team with an eye toward the greater goal. Some good action already in this one, but a fairly even matchup after the first quarter of play. And guys with the Rockets, what jumps out to you from a number standpoint? Just cashing in on second chance opportunities. That's how they built this early lead. Well, it's part of their strategy coming in, no doubt. And, and there may not be that much their opponent can do about it. Trier out there with Mitchell. Then there's Kyle Kuzma. And it's Vitadze in at center. That's the five for Houston right now. And we heard about market size mattering less to players these days, guys. But then we see summers where all the big free agents go to Los Angeles or New York. Uh, so, Kenny, which is it? Well, there's two aspects of it. There's endorsements and then there's quality of life. In the small markets, you know, catching fire on the marketing front is sometimes much more difficult, but there could be a better quality of life. In a big city, you could be marketed, and then all of a sudden you start losing, and then the quality of life goes down. Yeah, and, and the reality is the fact that when we played, there was only a couple games a week on national television. Now every game that every NBA team plays is on national television. The impact of social media, they're, they're just, you can be a superstar in a small market today. Doesn't matter. Look at Giannis. You look at Durant and OKC, Westbrook. You can be as big a star in any market in today's game. Covington passes to Maxi. Let's go. And it's Wade with the rebound. Uh, more good work on the glass there. When it's all said and done, I think rebounding might tell the story in this game. Out to Kuzma. There's Bitadze. Persistence pays off as they finally hit a shot. Bitadze's got the lead up to five now for the Rockets. And Philadelphia calls time here. Yeah, they Big group substitution here. Zinkis, he's checked in for Koga Bitadze. Anthony comes in for Kyle Kuzma. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s checked in for Donovan Mitchell. And it's Lonzo Ball in for Alonzo Trier. Kenny, when you came into the NBA as a rookie, was there a veteran who stepped in to become your mentor? Uh, my first coach, Bill Russell, was a He mentor. was your mentor. Yes, yeah. yes. I, you know what's just even funnier? Like, the former players in North Carolina were my mentors. Because we play some, some of those games. Michael Jordan, yep. Sam Perkins, Walter Davis. That's like a Hall of Fame class. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all those guys wow. were still in the league, and they would come back and they would tell stories about what it takes to be in the NBA and how you got to stay there. So those were my mentors. And you drank in every word. Oh, right? every yeah, second. Right? Yeah. That's good from Ball. It's quiet, easygoing nature. That's what Ball brings. Uh, that's what makes him so likable. He's someone his team loves to play for, and they generally respect. And here in the second, two minutes gone by. Ingram kicks to low. Hardaway against Beal. And here's Ingram from the arc. Trains the three-pointer. Ingram's got seven points. If Ingram is knocking down this shot consistently, good luck. But you see the comparison to Kevin Durant on that shot. Oh, just solid on the one-handed slam. And guys, when it's a tight ball game like this, he's the guy they want with the ball. Well, we see uh, rookies like LaMelo Ball and R.J. Hampton uh, who chose to play in the Australian League rather than college basketball. Kenny, is that something you would have ever considered uh, had you been in their shoes? Well, no. I don't think I would have ever been in their shoes, honestly, uh, because my thought process would have been totally different. But I do understand um, how some players will opt for that option. But also, it's taking a huge gamble. And, um, you know, it's going to probably work out for these two talented young players, though. And the reality is most of the guys that have done that, it didn't benefit them. Because mm -hmm. what people don't factor in is you're a young kid. You're going to live in a foreign country, different culture. You're going to be around people you don't know. And generally, you don't get to play the game you played in high school because you're not the focal point. So it, it is a tremendous risk. And 
most people don't get to see you play until you get to the league. And so it's Ball with it. He brings it up for the Rockets. Now about three minutes gone in this second quarter of basketball. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. Here's Beal. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. I like how Bill draws these type of fouls. Excellent at working the D and forcing their hand. Philadelphia shooting their fourth and fifth shots at the foul line in the game. And a season ago, they hit about 75% of their free throws. And working, Kevin, themselves to the line here in the second, a nice way to get your offense going. Ball, the pass to Hardaway. Here in the second quarter, just under three and a half minutes played, and no good. Here's Lowry. That misses, had a chance to tie it there. That's a shot they're always happy to get, even when he blows the finish. Plenty of daylight on that shot. Bulls got the lead up to five now for Houston. I mean, it took him a long time to get into the flow of the game, but the points are starting to come for him. Some very aggressive defense to prevent the easy lay-in. And there's the call on Kyle Lowry. That's his third foul of the game. Seth Curry, he's checked in for Robert Covington. Houston leading by five. Ball finds Hollis Jefferson. Down low. And the dunk by Porzingis. Really unacceptable letting Porzingis get that kind of positioning. Once he's established, it's over. Curry on the wing. Puts it up. And yep, finally drops after rolling around the rim. Curry's got his second bucket of the night. Rockets have gone 8 of 12 since the start of the second quarter. That's a really high percentage, hitting around 67%. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Here's Beal. That's in for the first basket of the game after three attempts. And Kenny, great to have you on the show as always. You, you've got to come back soon. Promise us you'll come back soon. I'm coming back next week. Good. I am not. <laughs> I, there's more food down here. It's friendly about here. It's more room, more man. Air. I can't wait to be here. More, more air. air, everything, man. Everything's more down here. And see, Webb, what can you say? Kenny Smith never one to pull any punches when he's talking about basketball or anything for that matter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, he was such a, an integral piece to those Hakeem Olajuwon championship teams there in Houston. For the Rockets, Goga Bitadze's checked in for Przingis. Kyle Kuzma comes in for Anthony. And it's Mitchell in for Tim Hardaway Jr. Then for the 76ers, and checked in. Arjan Rondo subbed in for Kyle Lowry. His teammates keep getting him the ball in his favorite spots. He's done a lot for his shooting percentage. Stolen by Mitchell. And it's Houston on the break. Ball's running. Good, and it's Mitchell picking up the assist. And it's an eight-point rocket lead. An exceptional decision maker in transition situation. Oh, he's so awesome at reading the floor. Rondo passes to Mann. Inside, Adams takes the assist and lays it in. Picked out the pass nicely. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Mitchell against Curry. Outside, ball. A second chance effort, and it's good on the way in. Ball's got 11 points. Oh, forget about three-pointers. Give me a look from right in tight. I'll take it all day long. It's Curry outside. That shot off. And so it's the Houston Rockets in the driver's seat. Up eight points at the end of the quarter. They're playing a bruising game inside, and it's working for them. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Carmelo, I know in this system, communication is key. How did that impact tonight's game? It's working right now. Uh, we got to fine tune some things out there in the game, a couple of minor mistakes, but we'll be all right. Uh, I feel good about tonight. Yes, you guys were definitely in the flow. Congratulations. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. 
It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. It is Bedlam here. The hometown crowd loving that first half. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. And returning from his sojourn, doing some in-game analysis, we laughed, we cried, we turned down the volume. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Smith. Yay! Welcome back, buddy! Kenny, man, we missed you. Yeah, I know. You guys missed me. I like how much. Uh, Put it in the Minimal. Minimal. That's not a lot, dude. Yeah. Minimal, no. Minimal. Yeah. They treated me so what's, well down there. What's less than minimal? Three minimal. Oh. How about, ooh, how about zero? I'm so hurt. And now with the second half about to get underway, let's send you back courtside. And happy you could join us. We've got two quarters left to go in regulation. It's been one outstanding game from Donovan Mitchell. He's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate within the first few quarters. Yeah, the offense looks crisp, and guys are hitting their shots. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the second half of basketball. So on the floor for Philadelphia. Brandon Ingram's out there with Robert Covington. And then there's Steven Adams. Then there's Lowry. And it's Beal in at the two-guard spot. Second chance points have really been an issue here defensively. Anthony against Ingram. And right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. Ingram's got 15. And Greg, you play with some big personalities. Talk about the best way to manage egos and conflicts in the locker room. That's a that's a very interesting uh, interesting topic. No doubt about it. You, you know, Kev, first thing you learn from middle school on, your team is your family. And let's face it, all families have spats, uh, and so do teams. You just learn to never personalize those things. Never leave any stone unturned. Like, don't let things fester. When there are issues, you address them. Uh, and if you're not taking things personally, you tend to be able to work through whatever issues uh, you may come in front of. Good advice. And Philadelphia calls time here. Well, it's been an express lane. So Trier's checked in for ball. Now, while we've got a moment now uh, to see this year's three-point contest and how it's shaping up, let's take a look at some of the top candidates emerging as we see here some players who are likely to make the final cut. Not too shabby of shooters on this list, Kevin. you got to love the advancement and really the evolution of the three-point shot in today's game. Well, you look at Przingis. He's going to need to leapfrog quite a few great shooters if he's going to be a part of the three-point festivities in All-Star Weekend. But, you know, maybe he can do it. I mean, anything's possible, especially if he has a few big games from beyond the arc before All-Star Weekend. That'd give him a nice bump in the voting. And we'll keep you posted as we find out more and as we get closer to the three-point contest once we have our final list of official contestants. Yeah, it's going to be very competitive. That, that's the one thing we all know. We, we've got an incredible group of long-distance shooters in this league right now. Adams finds Covington. Outside, Beal. Six on the shot clock. Takes a three. Hands it from downtown. Beal's got ten points in the game. Nice and steady so far in the second half. They're three for four. Mitchell outside. The pass to Trier. Lets it go from deep. The shot, no good. The 76ers trail by eight. Covington passes to Lowry. Shot is good off the back rim and in. Lowry's got his second bucket tonight. They made the most of their halftime adjustments. They're shooting 80% so far in the second half. Here's Trier. He's covered by Beal. The shot by Trier, no good. It seems like he changed his mind halfway through the layup, tried to go to something else, and, and flat out choked it. Pockets leading by four. Three minutes gone now in the third quarter. Trier passes to Hardaway. Here's Mitchell. Gets the three-pointer to fall. 
Mitchell's got 26. And the coaching staff loves this. Mitchell being assertive on offense and just imposing his will. Lowry passes to Ingram. And slam dunk by Ingram. And one step ahead of the defense with that solid screen. And then, Greg, the monster dunk to finish it off. Well, come on, guys. Someone has to rotate over. Defensively, that's just poor communication. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game, the fans aren't always the biggest difference. And the 76ers with some changes. And checked in. And it's Seth Curry in for Bradley Beal. Here's Kuzma. Mitchell looking it over. It's hauled in by the 76ers. Ingram's got four rebounds in this game. Covington shot is off. And it's Kuzma with the ball for the Rockets. They've held a 12-point lead early. Mitchell's shot is good. An all-around player. Kuzma's very solid at finding his guys in their spots. Ingram with it. Wade picks him up. Ingram drawing the double team. Pass to man. Now Curry. Another three for Philadelphia. But the D didn't do a good enough job on him. He could be an ace when he gets a good look at three. Houston leading by four. To the paint. There's Bitadze. And down it goes. Dunk through off a wonderful assist. And ball handlers like Mitchell really elevate your offense. It's his precision passing to pass the basketball at the right time. Really a terrific ability. Here's Mann. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. We've got 113 left here in the third quarter. Mitchell against Curry. Now, here's Mitchell. He's guarded closer, and it goes down two points. And there's an edge to Mitchell's game. He wants to be the guy in charge, and if that means he's got to get physical, he'll do it. Here's Mann. That's good, and it's Ingram with the assist. Mann's got five points in the quarter. Well, he's not focused on the D on most possessions, but you can forget about him altogether. Here's Curry. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Now just a one-point rocket lead. And that's such good work to make this a one-possession game. Terrific steal to get it all started. He gets it in there. Mitchell's got 32 points. As hot as he's been this quarter, the game plan is simple, folks. Get him the ball and get out of the way. Ingram passes to Mann. And that one is hammered home. How about the inventiveness from Ingram? Not to only see his open teammate, but deliver the pass as well. Houston's gotten a success rate of just over 50% from three-point tonight. Four of seven shooting. Curry against Mitchell. To the wing right side. There's Trier with the three. And another three for Houston. This team really feeds off of one another in terms of their energy. Yeah, yeah, it's taking on a different feel since the break. You can see how many more hustle plays are being made. Donovan Mitchell firing on all cylinders for Houston. He put together quite a quarter, 13 points in all. And he looks to be planning for more. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. We've reached the fourth quarter, and what has been a very competitive game should be an exciting finish. Houston's gone 5 of 8 from three-point land. 15 points and a deep ball for them tonight. Kyle Kuzma is out there with Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Then it's Donovan Mitchell. Then it's Ball. And it's Bitadze in at the five, roaming the paint. That's the five for Houston right now. And Adams kicks to Beal to tie it up 
And he sinks the layup. Beal's got it all tied up now for the 76ers. He's been a different player since halftime. Coming on strong now. Ball, the pass to Kuzma. Here's Vitadze. Adams defending. Philadelphia has gone 6 of 10 from three-point range, up over 50% for the ball game. Lowry, good. We've seen Bill evolve as a playmaker, including how he spots his open teammates. Mitchell against Lowry. And it's Mitchell missing. Uh, you can't look at the result of that shot. They'll take that whenever they get it. You're exactly right. I mean, that's the kind of shot you're trying to work for at the offensive end. It's been like this all night for both teams. The offenses having their way. Yeah, but defensively, neither side has been able to adjust, and that's reflected in the score. Oh, even from that range, the floater is one of the toughest shots in the game. Ingram dishes to Lowry. Here's Adams, and stolen by Kuzma. All alone. Oh, oh that yes. was an impressive throwdown. Yes. Woo. Uh, the quick instinct of Kuzma. He's going to know it when to go after steals. Mitchell against Beal. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. A, a, a tough first half, but it's been a different story here since the break. Houston making some changes. Porzingis is checked in for Goga Bitadze. Anthony comes in for Kyle Kuzma. Hardaway is subbed in for Rondé and Hollis Jefferson. Wow, a, a phenomenal talent. I mean, I mean, when you think about the competitive flair Bill plays with, it's just awesome. Ball with a wide open look. It's hauled in by the 76ers. Ingram's got rebound number five here tonight. Beal, two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. It's on Przingis. The first one falls. And both free throws good for Beal. Probably as close to a sure thing as you can have at the free throw line. Timeout called the Rockets. And during this timeout, I'm sure they'll be hydrating themselves with Gatorade. All the effort out there on the fed line. Let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Hey, guys. Well, the Rockets coach had some words for his team during the timeout. He said, I love how we're shooting the basketball. You guys have been locked in from three. Just keep taking makeable shots. If you don't have it, pass it to the guy who does. Kevin? Oh, he got fancy with that one. Yeah, maybe trying to give them the momentum boost they need to break this game open. Beal taking his time here. And Adams with the slam. I like seeing Beal thread the needle there. A fabulous passer in the pick and roll. Now ball. Third minute of action now gone here in the fourth. Mitchell outside. Pass to Persingas. Rebounded by Covington. The 76ers leading by six. Here's Beal. Again, Philadelphia. Uh, with effortless mechanics, Beal always has to be accounted for, especially from mid-range. The drive by Mitchell. Good on the bucket. Mitchell's got four points now in the quarter. Uh, they're going to be relying on him here late. I mean, just think about it. Hoping to come from behind, he just needs to keep doing what he's been doing. And here's Ingram from the arc. Field goal number nine. He's nine of 12 with that basket. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Yeah, and they aren't just chucking up anything. I mean, they're doing a great job of creating quality looks. Here's Mitchell. Rebound by the 76ers. Adams, the pass to Lowry. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. And the dunk by Covington. Uh-uh, proving he's not afraid to finish with power. Covington loves to dunk it home. Here's Mitchell. We've got 155 left here in the fourth quarter. Ball from long range. The rebound by Steven Adams. Adams has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. 
Beal the pass to Covington. And the dunk by Covington. And, and that's the kind of lead pass we've come to expect from him. Rockets trail by 13. Mitchell outside. Over in the quarter, Przingis. Outside, Anthony. The offensive rebound. Nice shot by Przingis. And talk about persistence. Porzingis just being a bully on the offensive glass and punishing the opposition. To the inside. Tries to save it. Here's Adams. That one is good. He's only missed one shot of his six taken on the floor. Yeah, taking it right into the teeth of the defense. And, and it's a defense that's starting to look frustrated. Oh, yeah, it, it's getting to them. The lack of communication. The lack of trust. And these are the types of games where one team clearly has the edge. Tonight, it will be a win by a large margin for the 76ers. You know, it's tough to put your finger on the deciding factor in this one, but I'd say that the shooting accuracy made the difference. Yeah, I think you're on point, Kevin. They got better looks, and that tends to lead to a better field goal percentage. And it'll mark their fourth win on the year. Actually, their fifth win on the year. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Brandon Ingram. You look at the energy he brought on both ends of the floor, and it's easy to see why he was a difference maker. Here's Mitchell. The shot will not fall. Now the 76ers take it the other way. Here's Beal. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Outside Anthony. Shoots over Covington. Rebound by the 76ers. Outside Beal. Good work there as it goes. Beal's got the lead up to 14 now for the 76ers. They just blocked out the noise, kept on grinding, and this is their reward. Showing remarkable poise and focus uh, throughout the game. A sustained effort across the board. So it's the 76ers winning this one easily. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, gee, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You, you know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And that about wraps it up. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Chris Weber, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA on 2K Sports. So long.